All right, in this video, we're back with seven more powerful editing tips and tricks that will seriously boost your workflow in DaVinci Resolve. So without wasting any time, let's dive in. To kick things off, let's talk about shuffle or swap. This is super handy when you want to change the order of your clips on your timeline without doing that whole cut and paste or moving everything around just to make space. So say you want this green color clip to come right after this pink one. What a lot of people do is they select everything after the pink clip, drag it all to the right to make a gap, and then move the green clip up into that place, then go back and close all the gaps. So that's like three or four steps just to move one clip, which is totally unnecessary. Using shuffle and swap is gonna make this way easier and faster, and here's how it works. First, you select the clip you want to move. You can click it or hit shift V on your keyboard that grabs the clip under your playhead. Then use command plus shift plus comma to move it to the left or command plus shift plus period to move it to the right. An easy way to remember that is to think about where those keys are on your keyboard. Comma is on the left, period is on the right. So makes sense, right? So when you hit command shift comma, it pushes that clip to the left and everything else shuffles out of the way automatically. There's no need to manually drag stuff around and you can move clips up and down the timeline super fast this way. But it gets even better. You're not limited to just one clip. You can select multiple clips on the timeline and move them as a group and they'll keep their order as they shuffle into place. So let's say I've got three clips selected and I hit command shift period, they'll all move together as one bundle. And that's super useful if you've got a little sequence you want to reposition somewhere else in the timeline. Now you can also do this type of shuffle editing with your mouse as well. You just need to make sure you've got snapping turned on. That's this little magnet icon right here or just press N on your keyboard to toggle it. Then just hold down command and shift, click and drag the clip and you'll see the clip snaps right into place where it fits and you can even split between clips if you want to do that. The next tip is a simple one that we're gonna spice up a little bit along the way, it's freeze frame. Freeze frame is great if you want to pause the video for a funny or dramatic effect or hold a shot to explain something. Whatever the reason might be, here's the fastest and easiest way to do it. Right click on your clip, go to change clip speed and check the freeze frame box. Resolve will then freeze the clip starting from wherever your playhead is. The clip even gets split right there and that second part is now its own clip or still frame. From there, you you can make it longer or shorter, whatever you need. Now this is definitely the most simple way of doing a freeze frame in Resolve, but depending on what you need for your edit, I'm gonna show you another way that could be a better fit. So that first freeze frame method is great if you want a freeze frame that just holds as long as you want, but maybe you only want to pause the footage for a second and then keep that clip going afterwards. That's where you'll want to use the retime controls. Right click on your clip and choose retime controls. Then move your playhead to the exact frame you want to freeze on, click the little drop down arrow in the timeline bar and choose freeze frame. Resolve will create a short frozen section of that clip right at that spot. You can recognize that frozen section by the red lines across that part. And you can now drag the handles on either side to make that freeze frame longer or shorter. And if we play that back, you'll see that the clip plays, freezes for a brief moment and then continues playing again. Now, as you can tell, that is a bit of a harsh start and stop. So let me show you how we can make that freeze frame blend more smoothly into the other footage. Open up the keyframe panel on the top here and then go to keyframe curves by clicking here. Under parameters, make sure you've got retime speed selected. Then select both keyframes and you can now add some easing by selecting ease in and out here. That way you can really dial in that ramp in or out of that freeze frame. And this works great for smoothly going into that freeze frame and sliding right back into the action. Tip number three is using stacked timelines. This is a great technique if you're working with multiple timelines. I use it a lot when I'm working with a select timeline. So basically all the good takes from a shoot and underneath that I'll have an edit timeline. Having both of these stacked on top of each other allows me to really easily switch between the two. And this creates a super flexible and creative way to build an edit. To set up stacked timelines, click this little icon right here and then choose display stacked timelines. Now at first it might not look like anything has changed, but what it actually does is open up this timeline tab area where you can start stacking multiple timelines together. 
You can either add new timelines by clicking this button over here or just drag in existing ones from your media pool. And when you click this button right here, it will add a timeline below it. You can stack as many timelines as you want. If you click this drop down right here, you can select between your existing timelines or you can drag and drop timelines from your media pool to open them. The best part about a stacked timeline setup like this is that you can drag a clip from one timeline to another and Resolve will copy that clip instead of moving it. So if you've got a select timeline on top and a main edit on the bottom, you can just drag a clip down to use it in your edit and that clip is still gonna stay up there in your select timeline. All right, this next tip is going to be a game changer if you've had a lot of projects where you're always setting up the same audio tracks, effects, and things like that. In the Fairlight section of Resolve, you can find an awesome feature called Configuration Presets. This basically lets you save an entire audio setup for your timeline as a preset. So track layouts, effects, track colors, you name it, you can save it and have it ready to go. And here's how you set it up. So right here, I've got my ideal audio setup in place. The mix is right, I've got all my effects set up on the right tracks, the tracks are labeled and organized and everything is the way I want it. I'm gonna head up to the Fairlight menu over here and open up the presets library. From there, I'll go to Fairlight Configuration Presets. Hit Save New and give it a name like YouTube Video Preset. And boom, I've now got a custom audio template I can reuse anytime. So the next time I create a new timeline, I can just tick the Use Fairlight Preset box right here. Now all my tracks and settings show up automatically and there's no need to rebuild everything from scratch. Even if you forgot to apply the preset at the beginning of creating a timeline, you can still load it in later. Just head over to the Fairlight page, go back into the presets library and apply it right there. So if you're regularly working on projects with similar audio needs like YouTube videos, interviews or podcasts or whatever it is, this will save you a ton of time and help keep things consistent from project to project. All right, next up is a super handy tip called isolated editing. Let's say you've got a clip where the audio and video are linked and you can see that right here by this little link icon, but you want to shorten or lengthen the audio a bit without messing up the video above it. You could hit the little link button at the top right here to temporarily unlink these clips, or you could even right click the clip and select unlink clips. And that definitely works, but it's not ideal. Once you remove the link, you have to be super careful not to accidentally nudge one part without the other. And honestly, things can get annoying really fast, especially if you, for example, forget to relink the clips after. So instead, here's a much better way of doing this. Hold down Option or Alt and then click on either the audio or the video, whichever you want to adjust. You can now move them independently while still keeping the link intact. And this also works for trimming. Let's say you want to create an L cut where the video ends before the audio or a J cut where the audio comes in before the video. Just hold Alt or Option, trim whichever side you want and you're good to go. It's a super quick and easy way to make your edits feel a lot better and it doesn't require any linking or relinking. Next up is another useful tip that's gonna save you a lot of time and it's called Extend Edit. This is gonna work great when you've got a bunch of stacked clips like graphics, titles, or B-roll, and you all want them to end at the exact same point. So I've got a few layers all sitting on top of each other. Some are longer, some are shorter, and I want them all to finish exactly at this mark where I've got my playhead. Instead of manually trimming down each one, which can be a bit of a pain, there's a much faster way of doing it. Start by grabbing the trim tool, which you'll find over here, or just press T on your keyboard. Now click and drag over the ends of the clips you want to adjust. You'll see that they get highlighted in green. Then all you have to do is hit E on your keyboard. That's the shortcut for extend edit. And just like that, everything lines up perfectly at my playhead. With the ends still selected, so still highlighted green, I can now switch to selection mode on the arrow icon right here or by hitting A on my keyboard. And now I can shorten or extend these clips to match any point on the timeline where my playhead is sitting. And this can be really helpful when you're dealing with a lot of layered clips that all need to be in sync. 
Now you're gonna love tip number seven if you use a lot of text in your videos and you want to get a bit more creative with it. You used to have to stack different text layers to try and do something cool with your titles. But since the release of DaVinci 20, we now have the multi-text tool. Just head over to the effects panel, go to titles and search for multi-text. Once you find it, drag it onto your timeline. Now head over to the inspector and you'll see three layout options point layout, box layout, and circle layout. With box layout, your text stays neatly contained within the box. So when you move or change the size of the box, the text moves as well and doesn't go off the screen. The circle layout lets you wrap text around objects like your head, a product, or whatever else you want to frame. You can also add multiple text layers within multi-text. So if you, for example, want to have multiple words or pieces of text on screen, but you want to be able to control them individually, instead of having a bunch of text layers on top of each other, you can have them all in the multi-text layer, which can really help to keep your timeline much more organized. And you can also animate these different pieces of text to appear on screen separately by using keyframes. So let's say I want to have the first piece of text appear right here. I will uncheck all boxes except this first one and then set a keyframe right here. Then I'll move my playhead about five frames, check the second text box and it will add another keyframe. So no more stacking dozens of separate titles just to get a creative layout. Multitext can handle it all in one go. All right, those are seven more tips that I hope can help improve your workflow in DaVinci Resolve. Now feel free to leave your own favorite tips and tricks down in the comments. I would really love to hear what techniques you guys use to work faster in DaVinci. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.